early lane phase, it looks like neither side leashed, so they should be able to get prio with their range advantage, most likely, but this is good, thinning the wave for two. So like here right we could have played aggro because we saw Warwick back, right? Yeah, totally. It's just like, you okay. want to play around the wave, of course, like there's too many minions to fight on, but like right now, what I would be doing is I would be stack. so I don't know that they're base right now, based okay. on the information that you have, but once you start hit, like you you don't hit the wave right away, you start slow pushing, and then what's going to happen is you're going to realize that he's not in lane anymore, and then you can crash on this wave and then base, and you'll get a big buy advantage. Um, because like, you're not going to be able to get this wave in in time without identifying that he immediately recalled. And what's, I think you're over pushing right here, because what's going to happen is the wave's going to crash like right here, and you're in a really awkward spot where your jungler's on top side and he's basing, and like you, there's no way you can get a cover here. And like realistically, Warwick wants to clear up, but there's a chance that he could just repath bot lane if he saw that your wave state was fucked. So like, I would be slow pushing this wave and then wait for this wave to connect, and then you can hard push it all together, and that way your wave is crashing and, and like pass or on your side of the line of scrimmage. Because right now it's like really awkward where you want to push this out, your supports like thinking he's the base, and like uh, this is crash. Like you could be doing the same exact thing like back here right now. It's just a good habit to get into. Time your pushes. Yeah, fuck this up. yeah, you should still be able to get the cannon and soak XP from these, so it's not the end of the world. But the good news is, is like they're stuck in lane now, and you're really strong, so like you can dictate the wave here. And this is a pretty good bounce window, so like I think you could play to, to hold this wave right here. Okay, because like the only reason you'd be wanting to push right now is if you're playing for dragon or you're playing to get your wards down, which could be a viable option. Like I think you could try to get a deep ward, like maybe like or go for the scuttle or something like. That could be a play, but just auto pushing waves in here like this is a, uh, it's pretty suboptimal because like if you want to get this plate, you could get this plate by like double crashing a wave. Almost the exact same concept where if you want to go for plate, you can wait for next wave and then double crash waves, or they're gonna have to step up for this wave. When when they see you hitting it, they're under no threat um, because they know they can just. He's sitting under tower. He's like, okay, I'm just gonna catch a wave under turret. But if you don't clear this wave, he loses a, a minion or two from them killing each other. And then also, if they want to step up, that Nautilus has angles. Especially because like they, they don't want to trade right now, because they're down sums from that, that mid play. And Kaizen Nautilus has insane kill threat. So if he's having his posture like up here, up here. And like right here, this is it's really good. We got the bounce all the way back in the center. Um, this is actually pushing to you, by the way, that all these minions focus this minion right here. So this is a perfect time to hold freeze. Like I would just not be hitting yeah, the wave at all. Push. Only way you would be pushing here is if your jungler is pinging like on my way to crab or on my way to drag or something like that like uh one of my mottos is push with a purpose like there's almost no reason to push unless you have an end goal whether it be getting a ward getting a plate getting a rotation i'm um, getting a back timer if, you, if none of those things are look like good options then you probably shouldn't be pushing as a general rule of thumb or if you're trying to hold them in lane like if you think they're going to make the rotation it can make sense to push but like yeah right here you kind of get split like i feel like right here on this rotation, like, w instead of auto queuing the wave right here, you should already be moving up. Unless your Nautilus needs 6 or something like that. Okay. Um, you want to be ho hovering a little bit further up, because right now you're on the bottom side of the lane, which gives them the inside track on here. But if you're standing here, Bard can never walk up through there without taking an auto QW in the face. And then, like, now you're split. You're not yeah. full committed, and you can't rotate, because he's got portal threat on you. It's a 1v2 rotation. And now your only play is to play for an alt. And a lot of times, it's you don't want to have to alt in when you can't actually make use of the shield, because it's nice to be able to alt mid fight to reposition instead of having to alt in right away. But at this point in the game, like I felt like I had a, an advantage over Jin, but then like I I guess I got really lost in the next like 10 minutes. It just didn't like snowball my lead because I'm ahead of Jin right now. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, totally. I mean, he does have the buy right now, but once you get your man yeah. in, it'll be pretty good. Although his buy is like more efficient in the short term, like because man means more of a ramping build where you're playing for your evolves and the stacks, whereas his is like just straight damage right now. So even though you have a head in gold, like the effective buy is like pretty similar. And also Can one I... thing to mention is uh, I think if this rotation thing didn't happen, you wouldn't be down alt flash right now. Like you'd be you'd be down alt at worst, but you kind of had to use your tools because of the way the rotation went. So, so here you're playing for wave and out pretty much. Now you, you finish the plate. It's not at an increment where you can get another plate. I'm sure you have a ton of gold to buy. So it's definitely a uh, good base timing. You want to play really aggro, but your jungler is showing on top. So that's the downside here. It's like you kind of have to wait for enemy jungle to show because I don't think you guys have seen him in a while. 
And if he's not showing on these wards, that's super sus. It means he's down here somewhere or he's on top side camps. And your jungler showed on this top wave, so they know. You could probably read how where the jungler is based on the way that they move. I guess I shouldn't have pushed this done. Yeah, it's, it's just because uh, one thing that the enemy's not doing that could be punishing you is a lot of times when you push waves like this, it happens all the time in challenger games where the enemy bot lane just like tanks the wave in front of their turret and they just hold the freeze really hard. And then like you're just in a really boned spot where you're going to lose sums or you're going to lose minions. So at this stage, like right now, if you had your alt up still, this is like a really good window to try to just 1v1 him because there's no way he can win this. Like I would just straight up skip the wave, I would E tag him and then go for all in. But as a result of the gank, it's not an option anymore. Because I know Bard's top, so like it's yeah. just a free, free kill. Exactly. He's just isolated. Like all these things, like they they usually don't seem like a big deal right away, but then once you see the the missed windows of opportunity, they can add up pretty quick. So I know Bard's like an issue for me when I face him in lane because what happens is he just roams and then uh, AD gets like way more XP on me. Yeah. Like, how do I stop that? Do I, do I just like pressure as hard as I can for like a two v one? I don't know. Yeah, pretty much. So there's two ways to go about it. It's like one with a support like Nautilus, he should be matching these roams a lot of the time because he's able to. But what happens is like when you get like a Yumi lane or any any enchanter support really, usually they can't match it. But what they can do is. If you can get any good trades on the AD, it doesn't have to be a good trade. Like a slightly losing trade is a winning trade when it's 2v1 because you can get dive threat off of it. Um, and like you should be playing for dives or freezes. Like the main things, like I mentioned before on the freezing is when Bard is roaming. I'm sure you know how bad it feels as an AD carry when the enemy's freezing and your support's roaming. Like you just have to sit there like helplessly and one of two things happen. You either have to give everything or you try to step up and you get punished for it. But because of the way things have played out, those have not really been options, so he's been able to roam. But if the waves were played more patiently, and you had more tools available, like, Bard would not be able to go for some of these roams because he'd be getting punished, and then they'd be stuck on um, sharing XP. And a lot of Bards, what they'll do is they'll go for the roams anyway, because they don't know any better, they're just Bard players, and then their AD gets really fucked. <laughs> so, I, I don't know if this Dragon Call was good, but like, I knew that Jin and Bard had literally just back, so I kept picking my jungler to go on it, but he didn't want to, and I don't know if we should have started that. Yeah, so I'm trying to assess it. The, their mid being dead is the only thing that looks good for why this could be a good play. Right now, I think I'd be playing for bot turret instead of okay. Dragon. Because like... I guess this is second Drake, so it's really... Yeah, I mean... It's just kind of uh, a close call. Like usually dragons aren't my priority in early game unless my jungler wants to, but he's so low and he's got camps up. Like I think playing the wave and like having him getting uptime on his clear because he's already kind of behind would be the play. And then also this would go better if you're not, wasn't really late on the rotation and able to stop this. So it's some mis mechanical play. misexecution too. I guess at this point I should have just gotten the bot wave. No, yeah, it's, like... it's okay to be selfish and like because what happens is you get the bot wave and you can always just rotate here and play for an alt in if you if they're really chimping it out. But at stages like this in the the game, so like most champions that aren't AD carries thrive really hard on base stats compared to AD carries, where AD carries are more item reliant. And also you see that like their mid jungle is just way stronger right now at this stage of the game by like 1k gold each or so. Yeah, pretty much 1k gold. And what's going to happen is, so you guys are down like 2k effective gold in this fight and there's a wave about to hit your turret and if you trust yourself to be the win con and like you're not on jinsies either it's like really close to so like yeah. just spam back pinging this dragon and then just committing to the wave and then like so what will happen sometimes is they'll run it down anyway but like more often than not playing selfishly is what's going to win you, you games in the long run because following up plays like this if it goes well it's winnable if it goes bad the game is just completely fucked Whereas if you play for this, like even if they kind of run it down, you'll still be in a, you'll still be strong enough individually to where you can maybe carry this. But the way things play out, it's just like this is a coin flip, and it's like not a favorable coin flip either. I should only take this if I get this probably then. Yeah, if you feel like it's a fight you want to be a part of, then you can like dictate the pace of the game. But if you if you, it's just a matter of trying to be a leader instead of a follower. Yeah, okay, so this right here, I don't I don't like this. Not sure what happens, but the way I feel about this, uh, I see 
Oriana walks through mid and she has to chase down. She's gotten really low uptime on farming. She's like 100 CS. And then I see this top wave crashing with GP free farm. And then also GP stuck in a long lane. And you could probably solo kill him at this stage of the game. So like, I think I would immediately slot in the top, play around Rift, and let Ori stay mid. If you if you had the Katarina, maybe she can be side lane. But like, you have a control mage that's down. So it's like... the maximizing the farm by like letting her have this mid wave and you go to this top wave and then if you don't feel safe on top wave you can even eat krugs between waves and then go shove this all the way out in a long lane and shoving out on a long lane feels really good when they're making like clown fiesta plays like this because you're gonna get so much uptime on your farm right here that i think it can work out pretty well and even though you're on jinsu spike like i do think the stinger like helps a ton uh, for the spike because the e evolve is pretty incredible with this build and now you're you're playing reactively where like you're forced to catch the wave under the turret that they already took they full crash this wave into your top turret, and this is going to bounce out, so you guys lost like probably about 500 gold on top lane. And then the fight, did, like York, just died for free anyway. So, And then you guys are on the back foot of tempo too, because you're, you're having to catch. They're stepping up on a wave that was already pushed, and this is needs to be caught. So like they have two waves of prio, and, there's, and then we're stepping up on this, and they get pinched. But like... If you were top right now, this wave would already be probably be dead. You could play to walk in here, pull rift, play crab, play top camps, play for shallow vision. And it, when you're behind, trading is like really good. So it's okay if they just straight up push down bot lane and they t even take this inner turret because it doesn't mean anything. But you need to be like actively trading. Whereas now it's like we're kind of chasing. Like this wave didn't get full cleared. Dude, this guy's diving, so I guess it's okay to clean this up. But like this is just like really messy gameplay. Yeah, but see now you're full rotating back into the wave that you were already on after it's half killed off, which feels really bad because like it's pretty inefficient, you know. And at this point, you want to push both these waves and then maybe you can play for tower. Um, but you guys are on the back foot of tempo because you have your work on mid lane. And let's see if they have any pinch threat. Looks like this ward is pretty good. If you see them coming, you know how to back off. It's good you got the wave in there. That's, that's really good. That's the best you can do. I, I think you could have done that same thing a while ago. And you could have done that same thing on this top window, where like, I think in general, AD carry, like maximizing side lane farm is really important, especially when you have a mid laner that can't catch side lane, whether it be the champion or because they're incompetent. And I think in solo queue, a lot of mid laners are pretty incompetent in the way that they catch side lane farm, because they're used to just kind of ramming it. And I think like mostly melee mid players are the only ones that really understand how to catch side waves, but a lot of control mage players are pretty incompetent at it because they're much more vulnerable doing so. And on a champion like Kai'Sa, I think you can kind of fulfill that responsibility because you're very mobile and you have a lot of 1v1 potential versus a lot of targets. It's a good pick. Okay, so you guys got the pick. I would use this pick to establish control and I do not want to force a fight right now because like right now, bot wave is really messed up. This wave's bouncing, but you can also get full control. There's no soul threat immediately. And I feel like for some reason it just seems... I mean, I guess this could be a look. If, if you get a pick, this could be a look. Like if, if, it's, if it's off a pick, but if it's just like running into them, Katarina is going to clean this up. Like they're kind of extending here. This could be okay, but it feels awkward. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much what I expected. The long story short of that is that when you guys get a pick in like a game like this, you just need to use it to equalize. You can't use it to force a fight after the fact. Because you want to use the, the threat of numbers to gain zones of control back. And at this point, they have like pretty much complete control of this area. And you probably want to trade sides of the map. So after you get this pick, you probably should just concede Dragon and you play for full Baron setup. Because they're going to have no way to close this game out until they get Soul in uh, like five and a half minutes from now. Or if they get a Baron threat. Or if we fight silly fights. But what's going to happen here is... Yorick catches spot wave, has TP, play around Baron with full setup, because right now it's pretty dark, but you guys can push vision all the way here, because you have numbers advantage, and especially because you know that they're going to pull dragon, so you can walk in here. King gets to finish camps, Yorick can even eat Gromp, and then like, th this wave is already perfectly crashing to where this is your area of control right now. And then if you push into this side of the map, it favors them, because they already have vision and first setup, so they'll get the jump. Okay, so let's see if this game is salvageable. I think the best way to play out this game... Okay, so their comp doesn't answer your side lane all that well. I mean, they do have bard roams, but I think if you could make a trail play... What I'd be thinking is right now, Yorick split push along with like trail plays is probably your win condition because 5v5s are pretty doomed. So, I'd be like... Ideally, Yorick would be in a side lane and you could be looking to like make a trail play on him. 
or you guys get control of Baron while they're on Dragon, and then you get a scenario where they're, some, one of their squishies is face checking. Because like pretty much everybody on their team, you have kill threat on if they face check. Like even though he has Cinder Hulk and even though he has Dead Man's, nobody's like a hard tank like Myokai level tanky, Malphite level tanky, to where you can't blow them up if they're face checking. So that's why I think getting this zone of control is really important, especially because you see this turret's still up and none of these outer turrets are up, and th this is going to be down or what at the time when I said it would be down. And then uh, Baron is up, so like you know that they're gonna want to play in the top side now. Like naturally, they're just gonna push this way with this turret up and Baron up. But like Knot's vision is kind of late here. Like I think it could have been like deep wards all the way back here. And like when he's walking into sweet, like imagine if you guys are on the map and this bard just does what he just did, and you guys are ready for it. Like you have a ward here, he starts a sweeper, he clears it, and then he would walk in further. And you guys are just like sitting ready here and you just get a free pick on Bard. And then you can use that number advantage to extend your setup. Or uh, depending on the opportunity, you could play to play for fight. Ideally not, unless it's a pick though, like I mentioned before. Just because of the gold discrepancy. So right now, probably path through mid, play for red buff, pretty good. Executioners is a pretty smart buy here. Definitely got a ton of healing between their Death Dance and Bloodline, Bard. Warwick, all that good stuff. I don't, actually, I don't even know why they're walking in here. This is kind of silly that they walk in. They feel like you guys are going to insta-pull, but they know that you don't pull, so they're just kind of running it down here, actually. It's really weird. I guess they think they can take this fight. So, like, if they walk in like this, they're surely going to walk in when you guys earlier, because they don't have... like you. There's no yeah. threat of pulling Baron here, and they actually just face-checked and ran it down. So that's kind of like the importance of holding your, your zones of control. Because this is like a big throw from them. Like you guys are getting back in the game off this. You guys can pull Baron off this because they're three dead. So that's actually a really good, really good play here to hold this area, hold these chokes. It's exactly what I was talking about before, um, and I didn't even know this was gonna happen. Okay, so ideally, what would happen was your Yorick took a weird path out of base. He's walking bot with this up. When I think this is not like this way is already fine. I, I mean I, I know you can't control this. I'm just saying in, ideally, even without TP, Warwick walks top right now, catches it, shoves it, and then it instantly rotates. Um, and then also you guys have to be careful how far you're stepping up on mid, because you want to play. If you know where they're at, you want to play to control this quadrant right now, because this gives you an avenue to check this. If not, you're gonna have to straight look at through mid, and you're gonna be at an awkward spot where they can get the engage advantage. But you kind of want the same thing like that happened over at Baron where you're controlling like this area and they try to like walk in and you get a good angle on them or they try to get deep vision and you can get a pick. Um, but I think a mid lane 5v5 would favor the enemy team right now. I wasn't hovered by enough people like I only had your so I guess I should have been off. Yeah and they're playing for control here. It's so, like right now I would just be sitting like somewhere in between where they are and where you are like right around here to where like I have options to retreat to my team, but also, you are correct that you guys should probably get this midway before Dragon, or they will just try to push it. I have trouble warding when I'm behind, even though I have a blue trinket. So like, should I be warding always on the side of objectives, and should I be using my blue trinket almost on cooldown, or no? Um, so, the way I see it is that you shouldn't be using your blue trinket on cooldown. You should be using, like, very rarely do you drop a blue trinket that you intend to be an elongated ward unless it's like you guys are about to play dragon and you just want to plop a blue trinket on baron so that way they ha they'd have to walk to clear it and you know that there's no threat of it um very often i'm using blue trinket to like check specific things while using like buying double pinks and like what i'll do is for warding say i'm in this situation right here we guys are controlling this quadrant i would like pink like one of these two bushes or if we could up here, but without the game state, you're gonna have to put a defensive pink. And then what'll happen is, is if I need to walk in, and then I can blue trinket lead, and then I can go forward and like W check pink another bush. And then I you push your vision forward, like you kind of leapfrog it, like from one pink to the next pink to, and you can use blue trinket and W to get checks. Um, that's warding isn't really your, your responsibility beyond your pink words, like because you're not gonna have yellow trinket, you're not gonna have like uh, sight stone, so. There's only so much you can do for warding, but like, you're not your goal isn't to have static wards, but your goal is to like dynamically check things, whether it be through your blue trinket or W. You're kind of like the scout in that regard, but you're not putting like the stable vision, if that makes sense. So like, 
it's yeah it's good like you're checking like w in this bush before you step up to this wave like that that's kind of the concept i'm going for where like when like i mentioned earlier like uh, a lot of the side wave windows where you could solo push out side lane like say for instance you're pushing out side lane here and you think they have a rotation from mid lane i would just drop a blue trinket like right here while i'm pushing out this wave so i can see their rotation for example um, that's when i would use it and i would try to do it in a position where it's like it's good to have it long term, but it's the main effect is to immediately allow me information to make a, d a more informed decision. Like very rarely are you dropping a ward that you want to be useful in like 90 seconds. Usually it's always like right now, but you do want to put your placement in a way that it's like a nuisance to clear unless you're just checking like Nash when they're on it, for instance. Now here it would just kind of take a miracle to win a team fight, like you need a big shockwave or cat inting or something. Well, that's a huge bard alt. I was yeah. kind of doomed. So the big takeaways from this game, I would say, are the wave management in the early game, for sure. Um, the posture on the rotations. Um, playing more selfishly around waves and like not taking fights that are inopportune, especially when you have like a losing mid jungle. Mid jungle is such like, it's the engine of every team comp. And if you are taking fights around a losing mid jungle it needs to be like a pick or a burst fight because you're gonna even if you have equal numbers you're essentially down numbers based on like gold leads and then also i think trading sides of the map is important when like a dragon is a give and you can just set up nash side or even the opposite happens sometimes where baron is just a lost cause and you need to just control somewhere because it's less about the actual objective that you're going to get from the control but it's what you're going to get when the enemy blind like if, if your team is prone to face checking an objective that's not theirs and contesting an objective that's not theirs chances are the enemy team is going to do the exact same thing on your opposite side of the map setup mm -hmm. so if you trade sides of the map they're going to walk into it and that that's what creates the situations where you get chain picks when you have a, you're behind and it, like the, a lot of comeback games happen that way where the enemy is just walking into zones of control that aren't theirs because they feel really ahead, so they feel like they can get away with anything. And then they just blindly walk into your areas and you get one pick, and then the enemy team tries to salvage a fight and you get multiple picks or an ace, and then it turns into neutrals and then it stabilizes the game. And I think that was your best way into the game.